हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू दिस क्लास एक ओ यू रिमेम्बर व्हाट वी वर डिस्कसिंग इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिस्क रिडक्शन मेथड्स ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज क्वाइट मेनी इंडस्ट्रीज आर प्रोड्यूसिंग लॉट ऑफ पॉइजनस गैसेस एंड दोस आर वर्किंग द ऑयल वेल्स एंड सो देयर लाइफ इज इन डेंजर for the industry will have to make sure that the risk is minimum and the people should not be staying too close to this industry and so so government and the industry sector they will have to take certain precautions in order to save the people's life we saw the example in bhopal there was gas tragedy in china there was oil well tragedy and thousands of people died and still people are living with a sickness different types of sickness they were getting because of that effect that took place years ago so that is very dangerous and we need to take care of our own life and the life of our fellow human beings now today let us see about iron and steel industry iron and steel industry before that we can see something is given there in this column first one is do you know Engineering industries are also known as sunrise industries and these include information technology wellness hospitality and knowledge so that is a very good general knowledge engineering industries are also known as sunrise industries sometimes they last what are known as sunrise industries so in a way we can say engineering industries and what are the industries included in that that is information technology then wellness wellness means providing good health then hospitality that is taking care of the people the guests and so in the hotels we will find receptionists and other office staff taking care of the tourists okay, taking care of the guests who are coming there to stay the customers all that that is hospitality then knowledge providing knowledge to the different people by books by internet and so on so all these together are called uh, emerging industry not engineering industries but emerging industries these are all new industries just recently started that's why they are called emerging industries which are just coming up to start developing and so on then below that there is something again smelting It is a process in which metals are extracted from their ores by heating beyond the melting point. So, smelting means melting. The meaning of smelting is melting. So, much of the minerals that we take out from the earth, it is not in the pure form. It is in the crude form. So, we have to separate it from other elements and take out the ore alone. For example, iron ore. we have to take it out from other materials when we take out the iron ore so many elements will be there so iron ore alone has to be separated and how do they take out how do they separate by heating it beyond melting point so iron is melted when it is 300 degree celsius heated up so it has to be heated up beyond that point maybe more than 300 then it will be separated iron ore will come away and other elements will be moved away so that is called that is a process of smelting the process which the process of heating which is for the purpose of separating the i separating the ore from other polluted agents now let's see about iron and steel industry like other industries iron and steel industry too comprises various inputs processes and outputs so the last class we saw inputs process and output so just like any other industry iron and steel industry also has got these three processes this is a feeder industry whose products are used as raw materials for other industries so this iron and steel industry make iron and this iron is a feeder industry feeder means helpful for others so this iron will be used by so many other industries for making so many other finished products 
that means the vehicle industry they will be using this one the furniture industry will be using this one another construction industry will be using this one so because everybody needs iron is it not so this iron is it is a finished product but it is used as a raw material by other industry in order to make more finished goods i hope you understood no and the iron and steel industry produce iron and that iron is used by different other industry and for them it is a raw material they use this iron produced by iron and steel industry in order to make something a different one again then the inputs for the industry include raw materials such as iron ore coal and limestone along with labor capital site and other infrastructure so what are the uh, inputs that is iron and industry is using what are they <coughs> they include the iron ore they take out the iron ore then the coal and limestone they use coal and limestone for heating up to separate this iron ore then along with labor lot of labor is required a lot of capital is required then the site the location the place is required and other infrastructures the machines the buildings all that is required all these are inputs then the process of converting iron ore into steel involves many stages then the process begins we got this iron ore then that iron ore should be changed into iron how the process of converting iron ore into steel involves many stages the raw material is put in the blast furnace where it undergoes smelting so the iron ore that will be put in the steel furnace and it will be heated beyond the melting point as i said 300 it will be beyond 300 it will be heated up and it will start that smelting process or melting process then it is then refined it will be refined with purified with the other elements bad elements will be removed from this iron ore the output obtained is steel which may be used by other industries as raw material so after boiling and separating this other elements from the iron ore that will be used by other industries as their raw material in order to make some different things and so on you can see a picture here in the next page the blast furnace the iron ore is put there and heated up and then you can see different process the iron ore is put there limestone and coke all that is put there then the blast furnace then the hot air is put inside then the slag slag means waste the waste will come out through this way and the melted iron ore will come this way so that way it is separated that's it so it is put here from here in the beginning then the heat is provided then it is melted beyond that melting point that is more than 300 degrees celsius then the waste will go to one side and the good things will good iron ore will come out this way that way it is separated that is iron and steel industry then steel tough and it can easily be shaped cut or made into wire Special alloys of steel can be made by adding small amounts of other metals such as aluminium, nickel and copper. Alloys give steel unusual hardness, toughness or ability to resist rust. So this iron is made and afterwards we can add other metals into it and we can change its hardness, its quality can be changed. If you want to make it very hard, add some other things. If you want to make it soft, then add something else. So, which other things added to it? It is added is uh, aluminium, nickel, copper, etc. These are added to iron in order to change its quality, to make it soft or make it hard and so on. So, alloys give steel unusual hardness. So, these other metals that are added, to in, added into it, that is called alloys. And that alloys, what is the purpose of adding or mixing with this iron ore? In order to make it more hard or in order to make it more tough 
or ability to resist rust and so on. So if you mix certain elements, that iron will not get rust. You can see some of the places the iron that is used will not get rusty. No need to do painting and so other ones we have to go on painting, painting. After some time you will get rusty again, you have to do the scratching, again do the painting. So some of them have got the ability to resist the rust. That means something that is mixed into it. The alloy that is used is against getting rust. That's why. Then steel is often called the backbone of modern industry. You can underline that. What is called the backbone of modern industry? What is it? Steel. Steel is called backbone of modern industry. Almost everything we use is either made of iron or steel or has been made with tools and machinery of these metals. Ships, trains, trucks and autos are made largely of steel. And even the safety pins and the needles that you use are, more, are made from steel. And oil wells are drilled with the steel machinery. And steel pipelines support transport oil. Minerals are mined with steel equipment. Farm machines are mostly steel. Large buildings have steel framework. So that is that paragraph is the answer. Why iron and steel is known as or why steel is known as the backbone backbone of modern industry? Because everything that we use in our daily life, from small matters to big matters, everything is depending on the steel. For example, let us say Almost everything we use is either made of iron or steel. For example, the tools and the machinery of these ships, trains, trucks and autos, all these vehicles we know it is made from iron and steel. Then even the safety pin that you use, the pin that you put on your dress, that is made of steel. And the needle that you use for stitching cloth that is made of steel. So even the safety pins and the needles, all that is made from steel. And oil wells are drilled with the steel machinery. To do the work, all the machines are made of steel. You have not seen any machine made with wood and so on. Is it not? In all the times, yes. Kandiji's chakka and so we have seen or the printing presses were made of wood and so on. That is all the times ago, hundreds of years ago when this iron and steel was not available. But now it is available and therefore everybody is using this steel in order to make the furnitures, make the machines and so on. Because it will be more lasting, it will not get spoiled if it is made with iron or steel. And fan machines, then the buildings, all these are using iron or steel. Then before 1880, iron and steel industry was located where raw materials, power supply and running water were easily available. So many years ago, 1880, this is 2020, isn't it? So that means some 220 years ago, the iron and steel industry was based only on certain places where the power supply was available, where water was available and so on. Later, the ideal location for the industry was near coal fields and close to canals and railways. So later they understood the best place to start iron and steel industry is where this coal is available. So also there should be running water that is river or canals and also where there is railway because these things need to be transported therefore they need the service of railway so these are the facilities now they are looking for but before 1800 they were not looking for this water and so they were only looking for power supply and now, later the ideal location for the industry was near coal fields and close to canals and railways. After 1950, 
iron and steel industry began to be located on large areas of flat land near seaports. So after 1950, they changed, they began to look for different places again to start this iron and steel industry. What are they looking for? They were looking for large areas of flat land, level land they need, not the hilltop and so on. So they were looking for flat land that is very weak areas and also near the seaport, the sea should be nearby for transportation. This is because by this time steel works had become very large and iron ore had to be imported from overseas. So why do they look for place near the sea? It is because the iron work industry was becoming progressing and they were wanted to produce more and more iron. And because many people are depending on this iron to make furniture, iron structures and so on. So the coal was not sufficient here. So what did they do? They had to buy from other foreign countries and bring. And to bring from foreign countries they need ship service, transportation by ship. And that's why they started making industry near the seaport so that the transportation or import from other foreign countries will be easy. And <clears throat> In India, iron and steel industry has developed taking advantage of raw materials, cheap labor, transport and market. So in India, iron and steel industry is progressing very well. What is the reason? The reason is the raw materials are available, labor is cheap, transportation is available market is available and so on. So because of all these facilities in India, iron and steel industry is progressing very fast. All the important steel producing countries such as Bilai, uh, producing centers such as Bilai, Durgapur, Banpur, Jamshedpur, Rurkela, Wakara are situated in a region that spreads over four states. So we have many centers that are there which are producing iron and steel and they are all situated in, in, a, in a close by areas that is spread over four states. So throughout the country it is not there, it is somewhat in one area. What is the reason? Because where the raw material is available, where the coal fields are there, they have to look for that. They have to see where is the cheap labor available. So they have to see where the transportation facilities are available. So they have found in this four states all these facilities are available. Therefore they started iron and steel industry there. Let's see which are the states. West Bengal, Jharkhand, Orissa and Chhattisgarh. So these are the four states where this iron and steel industry is situated in India. And Padravadi and Vijayanagar in Karnataka. Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh, Salem in Tamil Nadu are other important steel centers utilizing local resources. So most of the major iron and steel industries situated in these four states like West Bengal, Jharkhand, Odisha and Chhattisgarh. But apart from that here and there we will find one place in Vijayanagar in Karnataka, also Bhadravadi and Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh and Salam in Tamil Nadu. So Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. These states also have got few centers for iron and steel industry and they are trying to use local resources. So there is no much available the raw materials and so therefore they are not setting up very large industries or many centers just one or two here and there because the raw materials are not much available. So to make use of what is available, they are trying to start one or two centers here and there. Now let us see one of the important places of this iron and steel industry in India is Jamshedpur. That is one of the centers where a lot of iron and steel industry is developing. Then before 1947, <coughs> 
There was only one iron and steel industry in the country, Tata Iron and Steel Company Limited. So before the independence, we had how many iron and steel industry? We had only just one iron and steel industry. And what is the name of that? Tata Iron and Steel Industry Company Limited. That was the only company we had before independence. And it was privately owned. It was owned by Tata. So Tata is very famous, no? They do a lot of charity works also. The profit that they get, they help a lot of people to make houses and provide helps and so on. Then, after independence, the government took the initiative and set up several iron and steel plants. So, before India got independence, British was controlling. Now, after the independence, India government realized in order to bring development, we need to start many more industries, especially iron and steel industry. So, we must start in many more. Then, Tisco was started in 1907. So, Tata's Tisco that was started in 1907 at Sakshi near the confluence of rivers of Sabanareka and Karekai in Jharkhand. So, this Tisco that was started before independence that was started the nearby two rivers Sabanareka and Karkai that is in Jharkhand state now. Then later on Sakshi was renamed as Jamshedpur. So before the place was known as Sakshi and now the place is known as Jamshedpur. And geographically, Jamshedpur is the most conveniently situated iron and steel center in the country. So geographically, by looking at the availability of raw materials, transportation, availability of labor and so on, we can say among all the places, among all the centers of iron and steel, Jamshedpur is the best location, the best place for starting iron and steel industry because of the availability of all the facilities nearby. Then you can see in the in the map why we say Jamshedpur Tisco is the most suitable place for starting industry. You can see there is a lot of roads are there, railway is there. You can see a network of road service, and this is the area of Tisco, that black line. Then sideways there is. The river canal is there, so water is available, transportation is available, then all that, the raw materials will be available and through the road all this will be brought down. So that's why we say this place is very suitable for this, for this industry. Then Sakchi was chosen to set up the steel plant for several reasons. This place was only 32 kilometers away from Kalimati station on Bengal Nagpur railway line. It was close to the iron ore, coal, and manganese deposits as well as to Kolkata, which provided a large market. So we see why they chose this place. So only 32 kilometers away from railway station. Then the raw materials are available there. What are the raw materials? iron ore, coal and manganese. Then the market Kolkata is nearby again. Then Tisco gets call from Jaria coal fields and iron ore, limestone, dolomite and manganese from Odisha and Chhattisgarh. So where do they get raw materials from? They get coal from Jaria coal fields and iron ore and limestone and dolomite and manganese. These are also other raw materials that is needed to produce iron and that is coming from Orisha and Chhattisgarh. Then the Karkai and the Subhanereka rivers ensured sufficient water supply. So these two rivers are there and they are providing enough waters for them. Then government initiatives provided adequate capital for its later development and the government also supported them because when this, though it is a private company, when it is developing, it is helping the nation, 
which is helping the country to get development therefore government also support them very nicely and in jamshedpur several other industrial plants were set up after tisco and they produce chemicals locomotive parts agricultural equipment machinery tin plate cable and wire so after independence we saw government was trying to set up more and more industries the iron and steel industries so for what they wanted to produce chemicals locomotive parts locomotive means engine parts then agriculture equipments different things for plowing and so on for agriculture then different machines which every factory is using so many machines even the vehicles are all using machines and the engines and then tin plate the tin what we use for putting our house roof and so different types of tins are there then cable to make different cable and cable and wire and so on so lot of things need to be produced and therefore india started many more iron and steel industries and the development of the iron and steel industry opened the doors to rapid industrial development in india so when government started more and more uh, iron and steel industry the development also became fast more and more people got job more and more people uh, started living in the cities towns and they have enough money for development and so on. that way it was helpful for the development of the country and almost all sectors of the indian industry depend heavily on the iron and steel industry for their basic infrastructure so every other industry the we can say all the other industries they are based on iron and steel industry because without iron they cannot make any machines they cannot make even the house they need iron for every structure therefore every other industry is depending heavily on this iron and steel industry if this iron and steel industry is not producing enough iron then all the other industry also will suffer they cannot make their own items and the indian iron and steel industry consists of large integrated steel plants as well as mini steel mills so this iron and steel industry in india they are integrated steel plants as well as many steel mills so iron and steel they go together so many iron factories or iron industry and steel industry they work together that's why we call them always together iron and steel industry they go together and it also includes secondary producers rolling mills and ancillary industries and also these other small industries like uh, rolling mills to make rollers to roll and also different types of iron made of iron and also ancillary industries so all these other industries are also completely depending on the iron and steel industry therefore they are all combined together many factories are in the same compound and one place they make one item then they send it to another they use that one and make something else so same item is going through different process and finally it is reaching a different product that is how we learn about the iron and steel industry how it is functioning and so on so it is very important for our country in order to how this production if this industry is not there then we will be really affected we will be heavily affected we will not be having much development and so on so in order to have this development it is a must that our iron and steel industry should develop and should reach a highest stage then only uh, we can really uh, experience the development we can really make so many other things and our country will be progressing and progressing so we shall see in the next class again about another place in not in india but in another place pittsburgh called Pittsburgh that is also a center for iron and steel industry in India we said Jamshedpur is the most important place let's compare in the next class between India as the most important place and uh, Jam and the Pittsburgh in another country which are what are the differences and what makes a difference and so on. so thank you for listening have a nice day